Hey y'all, this is BG Codes and I am Brad Garropy. In the previous video, I covered how to create users in our Firestore collection. And in this video, we'll cover a few different ways to read users from Firestore. Now I've got some starter code and it is stored on GitHub, so I'll put the link in the description below. Let's get started. This is the app we currently have. We have just a button to create a user, but let's add a couple different buttons for different ways to read users. So for instance, what if we wanted to read all users or read a user by their ID or read a user by their name or one of any other fields that might be in that document? We can do all those and we'll cover them here. So let's make three different buttons for each of those methods. We'll first start off with just saying uh, read users. This will get all users. How about read all users? And then let's just duplicate this button. The other way we could read users or a single user is by ID. That's probably the most common. So we'll call this read user by ID. And let's make a third button called read user by name. And then we'll make three methods to be able to do that. So the first method, let's just call it read all users. And on click is an anonymous arrow function. And we're going to have to create that function, read all users over in our users file. This is the file that will um, hold all the functions that we need to access Firestore. And let's just initialize some empty arrow functions here and we'll get to them later. So moving over to our users file, you can see we have our create user function here. Let's move on and make a read all users function and export it as well. It's going to be asynchronous and it takes no arguments because it's just going to pull everything. So we're going to call Firestore dot collection, and we're going to pull it from our users collection. And we're just going to say dot get. That's an asynchronous call. So we'll await it and we'll store that in a snapshot. Now, because we did a dot get, this actually pulls the data from Firestore and places it in a snapshot. Inside of the snapshot are each of the individual documents. So what we're going to have to do is map over those documents to create our users. So you'll see here TypeScript is helping us out. Snapshot.docs. These are all the documents in that snapshot, like I was mentioning, and we'll map over each of them. And for each document, let's return an object where we've got the ID coming from doc.id and we'll spread doc.data. Now let's talk about this for a second. This is a snapshot of an individual document of an individual user in our user's collection. It has an ID and then it has a bunch of data on it. But oddly enough, you have to call a function to get to that data. And I'm bundling up the ID with that data because once we have this information in our application, we're not only going to want to inspect that data, but we're also going to want to look at the ID. So I put that all together. So it's really easy to pass around in context or state or something like that. So let's save this to a user's variable. We can log that out and return it as well. And that's our read all users function. So we'll come back over to app. This should actually work. Let's test and see. In our Firebase or our Firestore collection, we have one user, me, Brad Garropy. We'll refresh this and we've got read all users. Let's click it and see what happens. We are getting an array of users back. There's only one and it's me. So that's working great. Let's move on to reading a single user. We can read a single user by ID or by name. Uh, there's going to be lots of times in your application where you're going to want to pull down a single document in a collection. So let's try to do this. We're going to call this read user by ID. 
for that one, and then we'll make another function called reuser by name. Now, naturally, these are going to take arguments as input. There's going to have to be an ID there, and there's going to have to be a name here. So by name, we'll just put my name. By ID, we're going to have to go back into Firestore, grab this ID, and paste it here. And we'll import these from the user's file. They haven't been created yet. We're going to get to that in a second. Okay. So let's hop over to our user's file. We're going to make two more functions. One's going to be read user by ID, clone this, and this will be read user by name. Both are asyn asynchronous. And read user by ID takes an ID as an argument, and read user by name will take a name as an argument. And let's export them before we forget. Okay, so in a very similar pattern, uh, we're going to be awaiting a call to Firestore in the user's collection. And in this case, we're going to be looking at a specific document referenced by that ID that we passed in. And because we want the data, we call git. So you can get just the document reference by calling this doc method. But if we want the actual data inside of it, we have to call git. And anytime that we uh, do that, we get like a, a snapshot back. In this case, this is a document snapshot coming back. So like I've done in previous functions, we're going to make an object here called user. And we want to, we want to provide the ID. So the ID is going to be coming from the document that we got back. And we want to give it the data that came along with it as well. So document.data, again, you have to call that function to get the data a little bit weird, if you ask me. And now we can log the user that we just had and return the user. Let's test and see if this works. Read user by ID, let's refresh. Read user by ID, this should come back with exactly one user. Note that it's an object, not an array, and it is myself. We asked for a user with this ID, starting with L-I-N-P, and got it back. And now let's do the same thing for read user by name. Most of this code will be the same. I'll copy and paste it. However, the main difference is instead of looking for a specific document, we're actually searching the collection. So uh, it's you're saying in the collection of users, get the users where this statement is true. And this takes three arguments. This says, uh, what field are you looking at? So because we're reading a user by name, we're looking at the name field. And then the equality operator or the operator here. Uh, is it equal to something? Is it not equal to something? Is it greater than or less than? Or is it in an array or not in an array? Uh, they provide a few like kind of logical operators for you to choose from. So in this case, we're going to put equals equals. That means equals. So find a user where name is equal to the name input that we provided. And again, we want the actual data. So we're calling dot get. Now, one more thing that you could do here although it doesn't totally matter. Uh, you could do a dot limit, and this will limit the number of results returned. In this case, we'll limit it to one. And now the very same thing, we get a document snapshot back. So we can take that document, grab its ID, grab the data, log it, and return it. So remember in our application, we are reading user by name, Brad Garapy. So this should return the same user as read user by ID. So let's run that a few times. Read user by ID, that's getting me. It's looking it up by the ID. Now read user by name. Oh, we have an error. Let's go figure out why. 
Ah, yes. I know why. This does not uh, return a document. This returns a snapshot. And in this snapshot, there can be many documents. So we need to get only the first one. So we'll say const doc equals snapshot dot docs zero. We limited it to one. So we know the result will be an array with one or no objects in it. You can handle that error case yourself. But we had to go through that snapshot and grab the document that we were looking for, the first document. Let's go back. So read user by ID gets the proper one. Read user by name returns the exact same one because we're looking for Brad Garrity, that exact name. So that's how you can read users from Firestore. You can read all users, read them by ID, or read them by any field that you like. In the next video, I'll show you how to update the documents in a Firestore collection. I'll see you there.